Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So yesterday I posted a video about a possible Windows 12 and what we know so far about a possible Windows 12 release. And I'll link that video down below and in the end screen. Now just to follow on from that video, I thought today we could have a bit more of an in-depth look at what we know so far about this year's annual feature update, which originally was supposed to be Windows 12. Never confirmed by Microsoft, but many thought, including myself, that this would be Windows 12, but it's actually going to be the 24H2 feature update, also known as the Windows 11 2024 update, and that will be this year's annual feature update. So just to focus on the release dates and the availability and a couple of features, uh, just to keep you guys in the loop regarding 24H2. Now, once again, regarding the features, this is not a comprehensive list and is subject to change. But um, just to talk about first the release date and the availability. Now, Windows 11 version 24H2, as you may well know, and as I have posted, is available already on new Copilot Plus PCs that began um, shipping on the 18th of June this year. And those are obviously devices with a Snapdragon X Elite CPU and chip. And uh, um, for the rest of us who do not have Copilot Plus PCs, a September or October release um, date for version 24H2 that um, will be rolling out for PCs that aren't Copilot Plus PCs is expected. And it is also expected that Microsoft will finalize version 24H2 uh, in August before starting the rollout. I would suggest at the end of September, moving into October, as, as I've been saying for the last couple of months. Now, something else is that version 24H2 is based on a new release of the Windows platform. And the update will be installed using the OS swap method that is applied by replacing the entire OS with a newer version, which is different from version 23H2, which was applied by servicing the existing OS install. So that's the difference between 23H2 and 24H2. So 24H2 is based on a new Windows platform. So just take note of that. And when the update does begin rolling out, um, if it does in September, October, which I suggest it will, it will also, uh, it will do so in what I would say a controlled rollout. So this means that you um, won't get the update right away. For some, um, I think for most, we won't get the update right away as Microsoft um, likes to make sure that the update is working as intended for a broader rollout. And you'll also be able to manually update to Windows 11 version 24H2 if you don't want to wait by heading over to the download Windows page and then using the update assistant or the media creation tool and so on to force upgrade to 24H2, which I did with 23H2 because 23H2 didn't roll out initially for me uh, last year. And obviously I wanted to get the update installed for the purposes of this channel. So if that happens to me this year, I'll also be using the update assistant on the download um, Windows 11 page again for 24H2. Now, first of all, there are a couple of features that have rolled out that are exclusive to Copilot Plus PCs. And I'm just going to mention these quickly because we have touched on these previously on the channel. The first is Windows Recall, which has been met with a lot of controversy and debate, which basically is a timeline using AI that remembers everything you do on your PC. So I'm not going to get too much into that. That's only rolling out for Copilot Plus PCs. And Microsoft, um, to some extent or the other, has also pulled that and has got a lot more work to do when it comes to um, the trust, so to speak, of the general public regarding privacy with that feature. And then also Copilot Plus PCs are also capable of a new set of Windows Studio effects that can be applied to your webcam and microphone and utilize AI to enhance your video and audio feed um, no matter what app you are using. So as an example, that will be in Teams, Skype, Zoom, Slack, Google Meet, and so on. And then um, Copilot Plus PCs will also have a new live captions feature, which uses AI to translate 40 plus different languages from live or pre-recorded audio and video in real time directly on the device. And then something else that will be exclusive to Copilot Plus PCs is co-creator in paint and image generator in uh, photos, which can generate images and text based on prompts provided by um, yourselves and um, the user. So co-creator in Paint is exclusive to Copilot Plus PCs as far as I'm aware. And then um, just to focus now on the general, some of the general um, features that will be rolling out. And to some extent or the other, 
we have already received some of the original features that were supposed to roll out um, already in the stable version of 23H2. One being the new Copilot app, which has already made its way into 23H2, which I have posted on. Um, the file explorer with the archive, native archive support, that's already made its way into 23H2. That was originally supposed to roll out starting with 24H2. And then just to focus now on some kind of um, general improvements and new features. As mentioned, this is not an exclusive list and is subject to change. Now, for this, I'm just going to head over to a couple of screenshots uh, because obviously I haven't received 24H2 yet. And these are provided by the good folks over at Windows Central. And here we can see some interesting stuff going on with quick settings where Microsoft is making changes to the quick settings panel on the Windows taskbar. And starting with uh, 24H2, the quick settings interface is now uh, paginated, meaning if you see here, you'll be able to scroll through all of the quick settings available on your PC instead of having a selection of them manually placed there uh, by uh, the actual user. And then something else to mention is the Wi-Fi list in the quick settings panel has also been updated with a new refresh button, which I'm quite excited about. It's a small yet significant change where you'll just be able to press that um, refresh button and it'll refresh your Wi-Fi. And it's also getting an improved UI for managing your VPN in the quick settings panel with a new split toggle that lets you turn it on and off with a single click. So that's a bit of a improvement to um, managing your VPN. And then the last one for the quick, uh, the quick settings is live captions have also been uh, prom promoted to the top level of the quick settings um, interface, allowing you to enable the feature with a single click. So those are just a couple of improvements for quick settings. So quite a lot going on with quick settings. And then regarding phone link, uh, Microsoft is also adding several improvements uh, to the phone linking capabilities in 24H2. And there are a couple of under the hood um, changes that are taking place, but obviously the one I want to focus on is that um, they will also be adding phone link integration to the start menu, which will be the so-called little floating panel here alongside the, um, the start menu with your phone status and notifications. And then you'll be able to click on any of the items in this panel um, to be launched directly in the phone link app. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, to see when that rolls out and I certainly hope they give us an option to be able to um, disable or turn off that panel if it's not needed and then voice clarity is something else that Microsoft is introducing and basically voice clarity is an AI powered microphone enhancement feature that will remove background noise when you are on a call or are recording so if you are using your microphone like I do on a regular basis for the purpose of this channel then that may be a nice move as I would say in the right direction and then for the next one, we are going to just head over in the stable version quickly to our settings because this is the new energy saver that will be rolling out. Now, this hasn't rolled out to stable yet. So if we just head into our system, power and battery, um, in the stable version, which I'm currently running, 23H2, this is still called battery saver. And with 24H2, Microsoft is basically reworking how battery saver and power options work with version 24H2. And they're going to be rolling out a new energy saver mode instead of battery saver that applies to both PCs with batteries and PCs without batteries. Now, the new energy saver mode will reduce, according to Microsoft, your PC's energy consumption by reducing system performance. And this should help extend battery life on laptops and reduce the power pooled from um, the wall or an AC socket on desktop PCs. And then when enabled, desktop PCs will uh, also see an energy saver icon uh, in the actual system tray regarding uh, the power saving and energy saving. So energy saver is also something that Microsoft will be rolling out with 24H2. And then moving on to the next and with version 24H2, Microsoft is also going to be introducing support for sudo which stands for super user do and our linux uh, viewers which i know there are quite a few of regarding the comments i see on the channel um will be familiar with this and basically it's a command line uh, first popularized on uh, linux and sudo for windows will let you run elevated processes via command line and i think this may be a nice step in the right direction and something to just mention with this is that by default 
uh, sudo uh, for Windows 24H2 will be off by default for security reasons and you'll be able to um, enable it in the settings app if you want to use this feature which I actually think is a nice move. And then just to mention uh, the next one, it's regarding um, Microsoft Teams. And they are merging both Teams for school and work with version 24H2. So you'll be able to use the built-in Teams to message friends and family as well as join work meetings and um, conversations with colleagues. So if you are using Teams, that may be a step in the right direction. Now just to quickly mention a couple of general improvements that will be rolling out. Um, there are quality of life improvements which will be rolling out with version 24H2 as well. And one of these will be a new offline installation interface that looks a little bit more modern than the current one with 23H2. And Microsoft is also testing a new install drivers button during the out-of-box OOB experience on the Wi-Fi setup page which will be quite useful for system um, developers and builders to install Windows cleanly without drivers. And I think if you are a system admin, that may be um, quite a nice little feature. And then Microsoft is also removing a number of built-in Windows apps from the actual OS image file, starting with the release of 24H2, which we have been speaking about on the channel. And just to mention some of these, that will be Cortana, Mail, Calendar, Maps, People, and Movies and TV will no longer be installed by default. And WordPad, as I've posted previously, will also be removed in a future update and while I'm just talking about some of these features I'll leave a playlist here in the end screen for 24H2 if you'd like more info because I have covered most of these features in separate videos on the channel previously and then one or two more to go and then on the taskbar Microsoft has also added a little Wi-Fi icon animation um, when you when you will be connecting to a Wi-Fi network and then right clicking the icon will give you a diagnose network problems context menu shortcut um, for basically fixing connectivity issues and I think that will be a nice move in the right direction. And something else to mention is that um, the task manager icon will also get an update. So apparently the actual icon for the task manager um, will have a new design with a bit of a UI um, visual redesign and change. And then there's also a new Windows protected print mode feature that will let your PC um, print using the Windows modern print stack. And then um, two more to go. It will also support USB 80 GB PS speeds. And it will also bring Rust support to the Windows kernel. So as mentioned, not a comprehensive list, but just some of the key highlights for the purpose of this video, just to kind of keep us all on the, on the same page regarding version 24H2. And obviously... Um, if and when that starts becoming available, I'll keep you updated. And if I get any more info regarding up and coming features that I think you may be interested in with and with and for this year's annual feature update, I'll post and keep you guys in the loop. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.